come up with another idea for discouraging the wallabies. Take off all that high, bigger stuff and then open them up. This is a male flower and it's got a long, thin stalk and these do turn brown and slowly fall off. First you have a quick walk round, finish my coffee, just check, see what's going on with the trees that we've grafted, come up with another idea for discouraging the wallabies, foliage spraying the young trees, the foliage, with chilli, mixture of chilli and garlic in the hope that the wallabies don't like chilli. I've had a little taste of it and it's hot. Might have to keep doing it for a little while. See how we go. So this one was done uh, probably two months ago, two and a, yeah, two, two and a half months ago and that is pushing beautifully. Um, want to get it sprayed before it gets out to the top so that the wallabies don't have a go at it. Jackfruit seeds sprouting. More rootstock. We keep going, keep propagating. Got to get these, bring these down, take off all that high, bigger stuff and then open them up because inside of these there's fruit set up there, which is too high really. It's probably fruited up there because it's getting more light. So yeah, take the height off these, open them all up so we can actually see the fruit. Oh wow, look at the breeze up there. Certainly blowing the tops of those wind breaks about. This is one that we actually did a demo on um, a few months back actually and you can see how quickly they bounce back. So what my plan is here is to remove this sort of sagging wood here, the low hanging stuff and any really really vigorous shoots so this sort of stuff here that's really green and vigorous and there will be stuff quite high up that I'll take off um, again it's all about sort of allowing for air movement don't want it too shaded if it's too if I if we allow this to stay really really thick up here then these lower branches will start to die off because they don't get enough sunlight and then slowly what happens is your tree just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger so get stuck into this and the other trees and then once all that is done I'll probably get round and uh, chip everything down there's still the remnants that went through the wet period and we'll mulch on top of this and because it's getting really dry now this this and what we put on won't break up that quickly still see uh, some remnants here of uh, chuck manure not sure how much I'll really get done starting to get hot now of an afternoon so try and just stick to the mornings to get stuff done out in the paddock and then uh, maybe stuff in the house or in the shed for the afternoon
So, wouldn't normally let things get quite this thick in the trees. It's just that we've been really busy um, with grafting and what have you, and we wanted to leave plenty of wood for us because not every piece of wood is going to be the right thickness or at the right stage for grafting. Way up the top there, there's still a couple of quite vigorous ones that have got to come out because they will just power away. So, God, I think there's about four pieces, four more pieces high up that I'll take off. Down pruning the jackfruits and we find this one. It's a little love heart jackfruit. Equally, it could be a bottom. One of the main questions that we do have is about people's fruit turning brown and falling off. And it isn't actually the fruit that's turning brown. The long, thin stalk here, this is a male flower. And it's got a long, thin stalk. And these do turn brown and slowly fall off. And see, this is one, looks a bit quite furry. That attracts little midges and what have you. And between probably wind cascading down and um, the little midges jumping from the male flowers to the female flowers that helps the pollination. So yes, in terms of things turning brown and falling off, don't worry. That is really just your male flowers. So. Don't panic too much. And the male flowers generally will start to come um, three, four, five weeks before any female fruit starts to come. Just that I suppose it's to help pollinate. Oh, I can still see another fruit up high up there that I've got to take off. So this fruit here, by the time it's um, big enough to pick, will be hanging down. easy for us to get to. So a couple of more things to do on this tree and then move on to the next ones. And then this is the after. So when it was all closed in there, we we're getting light and all this is all pruned. Have to come round when we finish the other trees. Got to finish those trees and then we'll get it all chipped. Woo! It's getting windy! I can hear branches going. Hello, big stump. That's everything chipped down, covered. We are supposed to be going into El Nino. So every little bit helps. And you would not believe the difference in both moisture and the soil temperature of like, even though there's grass clippings and whatnot there, but still the temperature there is quite warm compared to underneath the uh, the thick layer of mulch and this is what it did uh, about four or five days ago done a week's worth of pruning so far I've got another I think two days to go 
So it really makes a difference in how much uh, irrigation we have to use. Makes a massive difference. Alrighty. Thank you very much for joining us. And hope you enjoyed it. Alrighty now then. Bye-bye.